I'm here with Davion Franklin, ahead of Bellator Fight Night, Saturday night at Mohegan Sun. Now, Davion, you have a four-fight Bellator winning streak at heavyweight. That's the second longest active streak in the division. Do you feel a pressure to keep it that way, or do you enjoy that pressure? Uh, I enjoy the pressure, but honestly, I want to keep going undefeated. That was, that was my goal before I even signed with Bellator. I said I wanted to have an undefeated professional career because it hasn't been done in heavyweight before, and I believe I can do it. You were quoted as saying you're inspired by John Jones. Is that yeah, is that guy. true? Uh, yeah, just yeah. Uh, I'm inspired by his greatness and his, his cerebralness. And I've gotten to know him as a person. He's he, his competitive his competitive spirit is unlike any other. Yeah, and he recently teased that he'd be interested in a fight with Miocic on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Do you have any info on that? Any intel that you can tell us about it, or I don't. or or your thoughts <laughs> on it? Your thoughts uh, about think, that potential I think, matchup? I think I think John could, would beat Miocic. Yeah. How do you see it going if they uh, if they get there? I see John picking me up just apart. Yeah. So your story is honestly incredible. I mean, you had two hundred dollars to your name. <laughs> yeah, three hundred. Three hundred. Excuse me. And I drove me. to Albuquerque for uh, for one hundred and fifty dollars. It cost me one fifty in gas to get there. So. And you managed to collect six hundred, so you could live at Jackson and Wink. Is that correct? I tried to move in, and it's the the general manager told me I needed six hundred, but all I had is one fifty. So, so then what happened? I stuck in my car for a month, just trying to figure it all out. And then I was like, you know what, this isn't working out. I'm just gonna go into the gym and just 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 to get a look mm. and just see what it looks like. And then I walked into the gym, and then they see me in person, and he was just like, wow, what do you have? I said I have sixty bucks. And he let me move in for 60 bucks and I never paid to live there again. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Where where do you think you'd be right now if they didn't give you that chance? It's hard to tell. I mean, I think I, I don't want to say I'd be like in jail or something because I was never a criminal. I, I've been an athlete all my life. I was just going through hard times, but uh, probably working in a warehouse, something like that, you know what I mean? Like, not where I'm at now. This is definitely my chance to get my life on track and uh, I definitely appreciate my journey in MMA. Your journey certainly hasn't been easy. I mean, just talking about that story, it's pretty an emotional roller coaster. But where do you feel like you are mentally now? I feel I'm in a good place mentally. I realize that MMA, I, I didn't pick MMA. MMA. I feel like MMA picked me. So it's just like, like MMA wasn't my first choice. At first, when people would tell me that I should do MMA, I kind of was like, oh, I don't know if I want to get punched in my face for a living. You know, I, I was thinking like that, but it, you know, all my life, I just, it, it's been like in the back of my mind, you know what I mean? Just something that was, it was reoccurring. Like I literally had a guy stalk me. Like a, I was out, I was out for a run one morning and a guy literally followed me for like three blocks. And I stopped in a, in a uh, parking lot of a, of a grocery store. And when the guy pulled me over, I was just, you know, I'm in defense mode. And, and he basically was just like, hey bro, like you look like you would be a badass MMA fighter. And then that was like, and that was one of the more recent things before I joined MMA that had happened to me. And I was just like, maybe I'll give it a try. Yeah. You know, but when I gave it a try, I, I've excelled at it, obviously. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, you've certainly had some highlight reel knockouts. You've had amazing performances. Um, what's, besides your background, what would you say is your motivation to just show up and show out every time? Uh, just knowing that there are a lot of people who, who look down on me knowing that there was a lot of people who didn't expect me to be anything. People who I felt was like just praying on my downfall and like just knowing that I did I, I did get the last lap. Mm -hmm. The people who like, who said I would never be anything, who like, you know, told me I'd be nothing and just made fun of me and all that kind of stuff. Like, this is, this is like, it's satisfying. You know, I feel like every time I go out there and fight, I'm responding to those people, the naysayers, the doubters, who tried to make me feel like I was less than nothing. Yeah. And now I'm something. And I'm That's not awesome. letting it go. And I'm going to assume that you're not living in your car anymore. No, I got a really nice place now. And how does that feel? Man, it feels great. It's, it's my first place that I have by myself. It's a three-bedroom condo. You know, and I'm just going up and up and up. Good for you, man. That's exciting. Um, so at one point, you and your opponent, Saeed, were tied at number eight. Sure. But I just found out that you're number eight now, and okay. he's number nine. Yeah. And when I told him that, he uh, said, I'm pretty bitter about that. So what are your thoughts on it? I think he shouldn't be worried about the rankings. He should be worried about me on Saturday. Because <laughs> after I go out and do what I'm going to do to him, he's going to wish that he was thinking about something else besides rankings. Mm -hmm. What do you think sets yourself apart from him? Same thing everybody thinks. I'm twice as bigger than him. I'm bigger than him, much more athletic, much more faster than him. 
and I'm much more explosive than him, and I have technique. His only thing he had against me was cardio, because everybody watched my second fight and said that, oh, Davion doesn't have the cardio. Look at his first fight against Stephen Mowry. Stephen Mowry was 3-0. Saeed Solomon gassed out in the second round and quit going to the third round. When I had my second fight against Ryan Hilton and I gassed out, I kept going and I beat that man to a pulp. That's the difference. It's important to stay focused at the task at hand, but where do you see yourself within the next three to five years in the MMA game? Somebody who's, who was undeniable. I want to say I see myself as a champion. I do see myself as a champion, but I know I must remain on the course. I know I must continue to be tunnel vision and stay focused on that and just that alone. I try to like be more present in the moment. And who do you attribute this mentality that you have? Because you seem to have a very um, steadfast confidence within yourself. Uh, do you attribute that to anybody or do you attribute it to your crazy story? My life. I think that I know what it's like to lose in life. You know, how could, how could you be afraid to lose in, the, lose in a cage when life is beating to your knees? When you've, you know, when you've had to live what I've lived through, like the cage is easy. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, I feel like this is my calling. Like ever since I've started MMA, it just everything just worked out for me. I never had something just work out for me like the way it has in my entire life. Yeah. And now I'm making money doing it. So it's like, this is definitely my calling. And payday is coming up Saturday night. Yeah, and the thing is I really don't care about the pay. I care about the highlights I'm gonna make. That's what I care about. Thank you. Yeah.